Four seat convertibles, these are the cars that above all else are bought to be seen in. But which is to choose between the Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet, the Range Rover Evoque convertible, or the Ford Mustang convertible? Oh yes, this group test is gonna to be totally roofless. Sorry, that, that was a rubbish joke. To help you decide which of these three is best for you, I'm gonna critique their designs. This thing looks totally cool. Inspect their cabins. Everything you touch just feels cheap and nasty. See how practical they are. If you pack your boot full of stuff and then think, oh, I know, I want to go topless, well, you won't be able to. Test what they're like to drive. There's nothing else on the road like it. And have a race. Two, one, go. But first, let's start off with some numbers. The Ford starts from £35,245. The Mercedes, £36,200. And the Range Rover, well, that starts from £47,500. But those are the list prices. What really matters is the price you can get one for from a dealer. Now, if you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk, you can find out the best deal you can get on one of these cars. Through CarWow, the combined average savings on these fashion-conscious cars is just under £7,000. And that brings us on to their design. First of all, I have to say hats off to whoever came up with a balmy idea of lopping the roof off a Range Rover Evoque. The idea of a convertible SUV may seem a little bit perverse, but actually, <laughs> it works, doesn't it? This thing looks totally cool. The quirkiness of a drop-top SUV won't be for everyone, though. For those that find it a step too far, the pretty C-Class will likely be much more appealing. This is one model that definitely looks even more lovely with its top off. And no, that wasn't some crass sexist joke. I'm a male car reviewer. We are not misogynists. As handsome as the C-Class is, it's hard to imagine many people giving it a second glance if it was parked beside the Ford Mustang. For me, this is one of the very best looking four-seater convertibles. I mean, I can just imagine driving this thing along Route 66. So the Ford's all-American styling conjures up road trip fantasies. But will the inside be a nice place to spend the journey? I really like the interior design of this car. It's just got so much character. The only thing is that everything you touch just feels cheap and nasty. Build quality isn't something that current Mercedes lack. And this C-Class Cabriolet is no different. Oh yeah, the, the inside of this car is just proper Mercedes loveliness. I've even got some bespoke sport seats here, and normally the car comes with Artico fake leather, but this is the upgraded real dead cow, which I actually prefer. We've got the upgraded sat-nav screen as well, which looks better because the standard one is a bit small and looks like a knocked off iPad. The Evo's cabin has a more rugged design than the C-Class, but that doesn't mean it feels any less posh. I do like the interior design of the Evoque, but some of the bits and pieces, well, the quality isn't quite in keeping with this particular model's price tag. This one's got the upgraded infotainment screen, and I must say, it's really rather good. Now, style is all well and good, but a little space in the back is welcome too. So what if you need to carry some friends? For a convertible, there's actually a, a decent amount of room in the back of this thing. There are these odd flaps sticking up with the roof, up, but I suppose you can use them somewhere to rest your head if you want a nap. And I think, yeah, your buddies will be more than happy to go with you for an orange marker frappuccino. Yay! Now, the Evoke's height means that it's quite easy to step into the back. And once there, headroom and legroom are better than you'll find in the other two. That tall body does rule out a possible entry method available to C-Class passengers, though. Now, you can get into the car like this if you want to. But you don't need to because this chair slides forward automatically to make it easy for people to get into the back. Like the other two here, there's only space for two in the back. Overall, legroom is okay, but taller adults might find headroom a squeeze with the roof up. So how about the Ford Mustang? This isn't one of the easiest convertibles to get into the back of. The seat offers no assistance whatsoever, and when you're in, it's a bit like torture. In reality, it's just so cramped in the back that the rear seats are only good for kids, or just an extra storage space. If you accept that those rear seats are only temporary, is the Mustang's boot large enough? The design of the rear lights actually alter the boot opening, makes it really small, which is a pain actually, because the capacity isn't too bad and you do have some underfloor storage. Wait a minute, what's this? Any ideas? Well, I'll show you. You see, if you don't want to see this exposed roof mechanism, you can cover it with this rather inelegant solution. Yes, look at that. You have to fit it yourself. Come on, Ford, it's not 1964. That's rubbish. There's no such faffing required for the roof of the Mercedes C-Class, though. Getting to the luggage area might be a bit confusing, though. 
You can only open the boot using the key or a button inside the car. There's no actual release near the boot itself, which is a bit annoying. And if you want to take the roof down, you have to pull this divider into place and it reduces the boot volume. So if you pack your boot full of stuff and then think, oh, I know, I want to go topless, well, you won't be able to. The Evoque looks much larger than the Mercedes on the outside, but does that extend to its boot space? So the boot on this thing is, well, for an Evoque, it's surprisingly small. <laughs> it kind of looks like the, the loading entrance for a ferry. Hmm. You do have some underfloor storage there if you want it, but on the whole, you're not going to be carrying too much in this thing. Overall though, the Range Rover Evoque convertible is the most practical car here. Then the Mercedes, followed by the Mustang. But what will happen in a race? No, not that kind. I'm talking about which car can lower its top the fastest. Three, two, one, go! Now with the Mustang, you have to manually unlatch the roof before you can start operating it, and then it goes quite quickly. The Mercedes, it's all automatic, and so is the Range Rovers, and the Range Rovers already got its roof down, and now it's just got to put its windows up. Can it beat the Mercedes and the, oh my gosh, it's gonna be close. So the Mustang roof is part manual, and you can't lower it while driving above 10 miles an hour like you can with the Evoque and the Mercedes. Speaking of which, this Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet is one of the least compromised convertibles I've ever driven. You know, it feels just as composed, just as comfortable, almost handles as well as the coupe, even though it's quite a bit heavier, it's like about 100 kilograms heavier. With the roof up, it's nice and air inside because this one's got a nice light coloured headlining and the roof is so well insulated, you don't notice that it's not made out of metal. It really is very refined, this car. And, you know, with the roof down, it's refined as well. So you press a button down here and it raises a spoiler on there, which blows the air over the top, while another deflector at the back, that also stops the wind buffeting around the cabin. And on the whole, you feel nice and insulated when you're driving along. Press the button here, you get air blown out of there, which keeps your neck warm. And you know, it's a really impressive car. The nine speed automatic gearbox, it shifts gears nice and smoothly. And the 2.1 litre diesel in this car, it's punchy, if a little bit noisy when you put your foot down. Still, I'm doing 51 miles per gallon, so I can't complain too much about that. On the whole, this is a really well-resolved convertible. It makes you feel good about yourself, it's pleasant to drive, and it doesn't feel like a compromise. Mercedes is doing a blooming good job. The butch styling of the Mustang suggests that it'll feel much more exciting than the Mercedes on the road. But is this true? So the Mustang convertible is a little bit of an odd thing because in making the transition from coupe to convertible, you really, really do notice the difference in dynamism. For a start, Ford has set it up to be slightly softer on the suspension, so it's definitely more of a cruiser than a cornering monster like the coupe is. Also, the car that I'm driving here, it has the four-cylinder 2.3-litre turbocharged petrol engine, which, while punchy enough, you can do 0 to 60 in under six seconds. It just doesn't sound so good. You know, for an extra four grand, I could have the five-litre V8, which sounds epic and would be great with the roof down. Also, I've got the automatic gearbox. Well, it's efficient enough. It's just a little bit slow to respond. And on the whole, this car just doesn't feel as sporty as I wish it would. It handles okay, and it rides over bumps more with a bit of a shimmy and a bit of a bounce, so it's not super comfy. So, yeah, it feels a little bit compromised. Good value for money, and it does have a sense of occasion, but it just doesn't make me feel quite as special as I think it should do. Let's face it, nobody buys a Mustang to save fuel, but this four-cylinder petrol is much more efficient than the big V8 option. It averaged 26 miles per gallon, which isn't far off Ford's official claim of around 29 miles per gallon, but still, it's much more thirsty than the Mercedes. However, it's not that much worse than the Evoque, which only averaged 30.1 miles per gallon, even though it was a diesel. But how was the rest of the drive? So the Evoque convertible, it's quite an interesting car. You see, in terms of the way it drives, it's it's not quite as good dynamically as the normal Evoque, but that's not going to swing your buying decision. You know, you're not going to buy it because it handles great. You're going to buy it for the way it looks, and it looks interesting, and it just feels special when you're driving it. There's nothing else on the road like it. You know, you sit in the pie, you're looking down on other people, you've got the roof chopped off in an SUV. You can go off road if you want. It's just a unique experience. It feels special and you can forgive it any of its downsides. Shimmy's a bit over bumped. You can forgive the fact that it doesn't corner as well as 
some other convertibles because that doesn't matter. This car is just for cruising about in, looking cool and feeling cool. And it does that, it makes you feel like life is good. So then, where does all that leave us? The Ford, well, it looks great. And it's actually surprisingly good value for money when you consider what you get. Then there's the Range Rover Evoque. I mean, <laughs> this thing is so unique. It's such an experience to drive, but it is rather expensive. The Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet, now, this has got it all, really. It's got a desirable badge. It's great to drive. It's lovely inside. And really, that's why it wins this test. Please like, share and comment on this video and click on our logo to subscribe for more. Or click on the windows to watch the detailed reviews of each car in this test.